Good afternoon, everybody. It is Meteorology Ains Weather well Forecast here, and welcome back to another weather update, guys. As you can tell, this is going to be another tropical update here on now on Hurricane Dorian. So, yes, Hurricane Dorian has finally formed. Earlier today, it formed and it actually did not make a really direct impact on much of Puerto Rico. It actually went to the uh, eastern islands, so it didn't really make a huge impact on the major inland areas of Puerto Rico like we thought. So it, it kind of took a, a, a turn around Puerto Rico, and we're going to be talking all about that. Uh, if you guys are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. We're getting very close to 1,800. It really means a lot, guys. Also, be sure to like the video. Let's try to get to 10 likes. And also, uh, if you guys need... Uh, if you guys know anyone that is in the path of the system, be sure to share the video so they are safe. I have a little stuffy nose today. I woke up like this, so I apologize if I start to uh, sniffle a little bit. Uh, but yeah, uh, if you guys want to know all the new updates on Dorian and where it's going to go, that'll come right up. So we will be looking at the five-day uh, five uh, graphical tropical weather outlook. And here again, we have Tropical Depression Aaron. Not really a huge threat. Again, Aaron was not really a major threat, really. But here we have Hurricane Dorian. And it did grow a lot since it uh, weakened, since the Lesser Antilles. And actually, it would have been a lot weaker. But since it did only go around the island of Puerto Rico like this, it really shouldn't be. Uh, shouldn't have been a huge issue but again it is still bringing a lot of flooding issues and a lot of a lot of wind issues for the eastern part of puerto rico we have 70 knots which is 80 miles per hour so again it is a bit stronger when it, there when it was earlier today it is at 997 millibars so boy it's a lot more organized a lot more vorticity in circular formation and it is moving a bit faster now at 14 miles per hour to the west so again it, the issue, the next area issue is Bahamas, the Bahamas, mostly the northern islands here. I don't, really don't think the major islands should be an issue. I think just more the northern islands. That's where we should have an issue. And then it should go like this and potentially even hit Georgia. The issue where it's going to go, that's actually going to be a bit of an issue because it, it has a lot of areas where the system can go. And we're going to be looking at what we have. So again, guys, this is the satellite imagery. And again, it did hit the uh, west, the eastern islands of Puerto Rico. That's where we have major landfall, direct landfall with the eye. Again, we didn't have a eye um eye um the eye wall hit Puerto um the major part of Puerto Rico. We do have the outer bands in some areas of the central outer bands that are bringing a whole lot of rain right for the major part of Puerto Rico. But I mean by really extreme landfall, I mean direct landfall with the eye going through. Again, it did go through Puerto Rico, but the, the just the eastern islands, it didn't hit the major area like we thought so it did actually take a last minute it actually was supposed to go like this but then it kind of went like this so again it did go it did go around the major area of puerto rico which kind of uh, made it uh, even a bigger threat now so again we have a lot more vorticity to a lot bigger we have way more outer bands look at these outer bands here in the southern part of the storm a lot more outer bands we're having some more bands starting to form in the northern part of the storm so again it's getting extremely organized it's going to become a huge threat as we could potentially become a major hurricane which we're going to be looking at um very soon so here we're going to be looking at the conan timing and we actually have a lot to discuss about in the on this slide right here or on this website or at this part so again this is where we have these issues right here the x is where it was at 5 p.m today so this is just updated and in the red we actually have hurricane warnings in effect for those islands off puerto rico and again, we have some eastern parts of Puerto Rico that have hurricane warnings. And then we have all Puerto Rico does have hurricane watches. And then in the blue, we do have tropical storm uh, warnings. So again, Dominican Republic and Haiti, you guys don't have a huge threat anymore. It did take a weird turn. So now the huge threat again is for the northern Bahamas. But here it is. The huge threat is Saturday. This, this is actually going to be a topic we're going to be talking about for the next couple of days. It might get a little boring to talk about, but we're going to have a huge threat for Florida now. So it went through Puerto Rico, went through the Lesser Antilles. Now the major land area is actually the United States, either Georgia or Florida. And we're not going to take the doubt. We're not going to take the doubt out if it could hit South Carolina or maybe South or North Carolina. Again, it somehow do favor it possibly hitting these areas. So again, we have multiple areas where it can go, but we're going to be basically focusing on what NOAA shows really. So we could have a major hurricane, which is a Category 3 or above. So we went from talking to a Category 1, to Category 2 at, at most, possibly a Category 3 to 4, guys. This is going to be an extreme hurricane 
four parts of South Central and North Central Florida. Actually, almost all of Florida. You guys will have to worry about it from Miami up to Jacksonville. And then become major hurricanes Sunday or Saturday. And then Sunday and Monday is actually the big day. Sunday is when it gets extremely close. It's going to be about possibly at a Category 4 again. It will hit the Northern Bahamas for sure. And again, we have it possibly making landfall as possibly maybe at a Category 3 and maybe a very strong Category 2. What it looks like, it looks like it goes straight through Orlando. So this is where the eye is looking like it's going to go based on what we're seeing. I, it, it can either go like this or like this or straight up. So this is, again, where the issue is. But it looks like it goes through Palm Bay and straight through Orlando. And it looks like it either could go at the coast like this and possibly hit Jacksonville or possibly hit the Big Bend area, which is still, again, uh, still uh, getting um, still um, getting ready for, or getting um, pre uh, sorry, not getting prepared. Still recovering. I couldn't get the word out, guys. Still recovering from Michael. I could not get the word out. I don't know why. So it's going to be a huge threat for many areas. And the thing about this system, it hit a lot of areas that got impacted by past hurricanes like Puerto Rico. At least it didn't hit the main area. So again, we have some models do favor and actually going a bit more to the north. We have about two to three miles possibly going into the direction of the possibly Georgia and the Carolinas. But again, I'm going to have to stick with this path. I'm going to have to stick with it hitting Florida and continuing to go through the inland areas. I actually believe that it might go up through Georgia and parts of South Carolina. I really don't really think it's going to go. I, a lot of malls are favoring going to the Gulf. And then we have another major amount of malls showing and going up to, to Georgia. And if that is the case, then I might have to prepare maybe for some tropical storm force winds because if this makes landfall the category three, it can bring in some tropical storm force winds from my area um, right here. I'm like right here. This is basically where I am. So again, it will bring in a lot of issues. But what we really have to worry about is possibly from the Palm Bay area, if you're in Jacksonville, if you're in Orlando, if you're in Lakeland, do you guys still have a threat for some extreme flooding? Again, we have about a 50% of it coming out into the a Gulf and possibly hitting Alabama, Mississippi, and then we have about a 50 chance also for either coming into the Carolinas or Georgia. When I mean Carolinas, I mean not like this. I mean going through up like this inland, so it's going to be a huge threat. But again, based on what the models are saying, this is the cone right here. This is what the cone is going to be like. I'm going to have to draw it like this because it usually spreads out within the next couple of days. I think this will be the cone again. It did hit the islands. Going to go up the Atlantic and hit these northern islands. At this point, it's going to be a huge threat. Once it takes this turn through the Bahamas, Florida is going to have to really prepare now. We should have state of emergencies out by Thursday. We should, by Thursday or Friday, have state of emergencies. Because, again, it could take a last-minute change where the model is still going out like this. And we still have to know exactly what part of the state Again, if you are in southern Georgia in Florida, you actually really have to worry about this. So about doll stuff you're making. If you're in Savannah, you guys will have to worry about it. And if you're in Orlando, you for sure have to worry about this. Because again, if it is if this is correct going through Florida and going out into the Gulf, you guys will be in basically where the eye should be. So again, it's actually gonna be a very huge threat. Now we're we'll looking at the Dorian intensity guidance. And this is extremely uh, surprising what we're seeing here what we're seeing here is again here it is at 60 um well, it's actually at 65 not or no sorry it's at 70 knots here it is it's actually looking like we should have a category two two within the next 36 hours 240 hours once it takes that uh turn away from puerto rico farther away from those islands and we have a very 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 good chance for having a possibly major hurricane from category three to category five we have zero miles going to a category five and i really don't think we should get to a category five i think at the biggest we'll see is a weak category four and we have three miles showing a category four we have a whole lot of malls now at state continue to be category one we have a decent amount of her uh models still saying just to be category one but go up a little bit and then we have the other 50 percent that are showing a category two and when it becomes a category two guys it's not going to go like this. It's not going to go like that. It's going to go straight through. 
So they are very confident. If it's a category two, it will straight up to category three. So this is where we hit major hurricane status here at a hundred knots. It's going to be a huge threat. We have a whole lot of models showing this, and then we have all of uh, three models showing category four. I know that's not a whole lot of models compared to how many are tracking it, but it's going to be a huge threat. So again, here we have Hurricane Dorian. I know it doesn't really look that big, but again, it's still at a weak category one. It's going to be continuing to get stronger and stronger. It does go in the direction to Bermuda, but then again, it takes a turn. It's not going to be too close. I mean, it's going to be heading the direction and then take a turn like this. So here we have it at 94 knots, guys. It's going to be going heading towards the northern Bahamas. It gets a whole lot bigger and a whole lot dangerous. As we go, it does make a huge landfall in the Bahamas with 105 knots and gets incredibly strong within 111 knots in a weekend. It looks like, based on this, it looks like it does go through possibly Miami in parts of southern Florida. It looks like it actually looks like this model shows it hitting possibly just north of Miami. If you're in Palm Bay, if you're in Hialeah, you guys could see incredibly strong winds. And the European is favoring it going outside of Florida into the Gulf of Mexico, which it, it would actually grow. It's actually going to get worse. So it comes out of Florida. It's going to be a huge category two. So it's not going to weaken to a tropical storm. It's going to strengthen to up to 113 knots and possibly hit the panhandle, guys. And that is not good. We cannot have another major hurricane hit the panhandle. And then it's like we have a system here of Africa. And that, if, according to this, it will bring incredibly strong winds from my area too. So again, the inland areas also have to worry about this system. So now we're going to be looking at this radar. Again, this is this radar is not extremely just updated. It updated a couple hours ago. So here we have it at 999 millibars. But again, it's at 997. Here it goes through into the Atlantic. It's going to be, again, heading towards the direction of Bermuda. But again, it takes that turn again. It's not going to be getting close. I'm just saying in general... Let me use a yellow. I think I think the yellow would be better. No, I'm just gonna go with the black. So again, it's gonna be going around uh, the central Bahamas, the main Bahamas, where you see Atlantis. You guys won't have to worry about that. It's gonna be getting uh, again. Looks like it's gonna be hitting the Carolinas, and then again, it takes a turn with this dry air again. If you guys are in the Carolinas and looking for a direct impact, really won't have to worry about that. But here we have this incredibly strong system right here. This is at, at least a Category 3. I really, guys, won't be surprised if it gets a Category 4. We have extremely, extremely warm temperatures right here. It's going to be heading there. It's going to be uh, getting to a major hurricane without a doubt. And looks like it does make landfall. Again, the GFS is different. The European showing maybe Hialeah and Lakeland. But the GFS is really showing more of Jacksonville and actually Savannah, Georgia, and going through central Georgia and Macon, going through Montgomery, and that's going to bring in a whole lot of rain for the southeast for the next coming days. We're going to be looking at rainfall totals, too. It's actually getting very high with rainfall totals. Boy, oh boy, we can actually kind of track it with the rainfall totals. Let me use a yellow. I really don't know which color is going to be look good, the yellow. So this is basically what the track's going to be. We can actually somewhat see the track with this rainfall totals. We'll be seeing about two feet of rain right here for Jacksonville and Savannah. You guys will be seeing extremely uh, strong amounts of rain. Again, if Savannah will be about a, a half a foot. But if you're near Valdosta, Jacksonville for sure will be seeing the most amount of rain. Let's try to continue, see if we can move on a little bit without it loading a whole lot. It just got to load a little bit and see exactly how much more rain it will bring into the inland areas. Again, this is, we're going to be looking slowly um, into, again, it just has to load, guys. But, again, we should have the most amount of rain getting into, again, we should have landfall by September, uh, September 2nd when we start to see that extreme rain. And then by September 6th, we should have a whole lot of rain. So, guys, I hope you guys enjoy the video. Please do not forget to like and subscribe. And bye, guys.